You guys, we may have a serial killer loose here in South Korea, one whom we know extremely well, an extremely famous politician. Yes, Lee Jae-myung, who narrowly lost the presidential election last year and who is now the head of the Democratic Party. Well, media now not so dicey with their words in terms of being kind of blunt, being kind of, yeah, not so much not implying, but basically saying that when are these killings going to stop? Because this week we got word that there was the fifth so-called suicide linked to this man. And they are comparing his life to that movie Asura. That linkage has been going on for a really long time. That 2016 action thriller, very kind of gory movie centering around political corruption, around a mayor who wanted to redevelop this juicy piece of land and make sure all the profits flowed to him. Now, we've had some developments again in this case. And yes, we were talking about the whole SM takeover drama. But during this time when we were talking about the whole situation over there, there's been a lot going on with this man. And he narrowly escaped going to prison. But he is still under investigation. And the people around him are still dropping like flies but you know there's one thing you can't drop is your skincare routine make sure no matter how bad the world is out there that you know all of that worrying all that doom scrolling all of that frowning doesn't show up on your face we have a bundle package now on the website ecofaceplatinum.com you can get both of these, the full face LED mask and the eye care solution for a great bundle price. And one of my friends who just purchased one of these went to his doctor. And I guess, well, I don't know if he, well, he just wanted a professional medical opinion by somebody he already goes to. And the doctor said not only will it work, but that the heating function actually will have a positive side effect on his dry eyes because the heating, because you put it on for 15 minutes, you take a power nap or you do your meditation and you have the wrinkle treatment, but then at the same time, the heating function is supposed to relax you and increase eye, um, the blood circulation, but it will also stimulate some of the oil glands in, in the eye region if you have some of that dry eye situation, according to his doctor. Of course, check with your doctor and uh, feel free to take advantage of the coupon code SOULLIGHTTV. You guys get the best discount always on all of the products. So all that coming up, so stay tuned. So over the past month, Lee Jae-myung, yes, we've done a lot of videos about him. He's our, you know, favorite sociopath politician who just seems to know how to play the game so well and just gets out there. Doesn't matter what's going on. He just keeps performing. But this week, there was shocking news because a fifth person tied to his political scandals so-called had a suicide. And this is the fifth death in 15 months. So that's like one every three months. This is a little bit crazy. The opposition politicians are saying like, we got to stop this man before there's the sixth, the seventh, the eighth. When is it going to end? And over the past month, there have been heavy investigations and he's actually been called into questioning, but he was a little prima donna because usually when prosecutors call you in, you go when, you know, they tell you to go. He's like, no, I don't know if like if I can get up that early, you know, I think I'll, I'll go in a little bit later and make sure we wrap up so that I can go to sleep. 
And then he's like, I don't know if I can come in on Friday. Let's do it on the weekend. You know, he was being a prima donna. And he has been saying that all of these investigations have been politically motivated. It's a dictatorial presidency. President Yoon is trying to get back at him. But these investigations have been going on before President Yoon became the president. There have been a lot of... Let's just say a je ne sais quoi in a very dark, dark way surrounding this man for years. So what happened this week? The fifth person, he was essentially the chief of staff for Lee Jae-myung when he was the governor of Gyeonggi province. And he was found dead at his home on Thursday. And based on evidence collected at the scene, the police say that perhaps his death was a suicide. Most of these deaths, we're going to go through all five suspicious suicides, but all of them were ruled as either suicide or for health reasons. And apparently he left a suicide note. And he was one of the closest associates of Lee Jae-myung. He was the chief of staff and he was also the head of planning and coordination. And so a lot of these scan there's many scandals. I mean, one involves like siphoning off advertising budgets in terms of bribes through a football club. Others had to do with, you know, we've covered this, him trying to lock up his own brother in a psychiatric hospital, even though his brother did not need psychiatric care, but he's always kind of like threatening even his own family members that go against me. Like, you want to get locked up in a psychiatric hospital? You want to get investigated by the police? Oh yeah. After a family dinner gone wrong, he sent the police over to his family to meet them when they got home from the family dinner because he was the mayor or the governor. He was just using and abusing his powers. E. J. Myung says like, oh, this is due to, to uh, prosecutors overstepping their bounds. But prosecutors are saying that they only questioned this man once last year. And that was through a Zoom call and that there was no additional questioning or summons of this man, surname Jun, anytime after that. Now, what does seem to be the case from the limited information that we got from the so-called suicide note, people don't know if it was a suicide note or just letter, but it was like six pages long. It could have just been him ranting and raving because there is a common theme among people who are peeling away from Lee Jae Myung's side and essentially it is a sense of betrayal being used and being sacrificed. And basically in this letter, apparently he said that he worked hard, but he felt wronged after becoming a target of the prosecution's investigation. He even said in the letter that Lee Jae Myung should leave politics and that there should be no more sacrifices. Now, the reason that Prosecutors, I think, are having a hard time in really nabbing Lee Jae-myung is that he has, if he is guilty, he has done it extremely well where he is always one step or two, three, four steps removed from the actual people doing the crimes. He's basically set up a system where you make a deal with the devil. Hey, you want some riches? You want a quick buck? You're going to have to do the dirty work. You get the money, but if anything goes wrong, you're the fall guy. And there are tons of fall guys out there. And everybody looks at this situation and knows that these fall guys could never do this type of corruption on their own. These guys would never pocket 100% of the money on their own. It always has to be for some big guy at the top. Now, we had also the original whistleblower, just to kind of like, you know, skip to the end and then work our way backwards. The original whistleblower that is still alive, 
not part of the five dead, but I'm I'm kind of scared. But this is what also happened this week. He went back to get questioned by prosecutors, and he was like the original one that felt betrayed. And he said that a lot of this corruption essentially was to make Lee Jae-myung president, to fund his presidential campaign. And so once he gets into power, then all these sins, all these crimes, all these things can be hid hidden or covered over or never prosecuted. That's kind of the promise in these situations that you dangle in front of the, the fall guys is that once I become president, I'm going to appoint all the prosecutors that will never, ever touch us. And that the, the concern that a lot of the other politicians and people even in his own party, to be frank, are saying is that like if he becomes president because he might run again, he would weaponize the presidency the same way he w weaponized his offices when he was the mayor of Songnam and also the governor of Gyeonggi. And people are scared of that. However, he's such a good showman that he has a lot of support. He has a lot of drive. So in terms of like, is somebody able to galvanize uh, togetherness? Because if you're wondering like why such a psychopath is like, you know, kind of leading the Democratic Party. Well, there's really no other figure that can electrify, I would say, the Democratic Party. And that's what they say themselves. They say that like the Democratic Party can exist and can succeed without Lee Jae-myung. But Lee Jae-myung is the star, is the leader, and does have the resonance with his promises, his basically like populist promises, too good to be true promises to the people, basically saying like, I'm going to give everybody $1,000 a month, woohoo, you know? Like, he has uh, also crafted this image of like i used to you know when i was a teenager work at a factory and i got my finger like he says something's wrong with his finger but then even his own family is saying like that you didn't get that at the factory you got that when you was drunk and just kind of like you know like flipping over concretes or something like that and you know people in his past are all coming out you know but he's been able to just you know counter one after the other even that famous actress that he supposedly had an affair with she's just like i know what his d looks like he's lying about it you know like he even went to the doctor to get it checked and to have a certificate saying that she lied like there is no mole there but then she's saying like oh that doctor is also on the take and so yeah, drama. So this guy, let's go back to the unfortunate guy who passed away. He apparently was being questioned because now there's even more strong allegations of the person, the, the entity that they're looking at that also is like a big Per, big uh, corporation that has bribed and and provided uh, funding for Lee Jae Myung is Sangbangul Group, you know, double bubble, <laughs> double bubble corporation, and they make underwear among many other things. But they have like a real old school underwear brand, and apparently new allegations are that they've sh they've they've funneled political funds to North Korea and apparently he was going to be investigated for that maybe maybe not but it looks like he was about to crack or perhaps he just wanted to go and move into a different dire dimension and leave this world behind but everybody's looking at this and being like I don't think so buddy now let's go on to the fourth mysterious death. This was July 2022, and we may have even kind of blipped over this because this person was a civil servant. He wasn't even famous enough where the media released his name because he was essentially a friend of of a whistleblower or an associate of the whistleblower that was blowing the lid on the corruption involving Lee Jae Myung's wife. If you remember the coverage of the campaign, she was caught using the 
government's credit card to buy all sorts of things. You know, remember even like forcing her male staffer to organize her panty drawer, you know, even after getting her like expensive cuts of beef and expensive fruit and then dropping it off and organizing her panty drawer and charging it all up to taxpayers. Well, apparently... They, he, this guy wasn't even the whistleblower, but he was being questioned as well, and apparently he decided to leave this earth. I mean, who does that over panties and fruit and steaks? Police found no suicide note. They found no forced entry into the home, so they just believed that, oh, I guess it's suicide then. Now let's talk about the third mysterious death. And this to me is one of the creepiest because this guy was a lawyer who was found dead in a motel. He was hiding out because he was a whistleblower and he had even posted on his own Facebook saying like, look, I'm being a whistleblower. If something happens to me, it was not suicide. And what happened? He was found dead in a motel because he was hiding out there. Until, you know, they were able to you know, get more of the information out there. He basically took phone recordings and gave it to a civil civic organization. And the police said that, oh, he was probably he had health problems. And we looked at the CCTV. It looked like he had some trouble walking upstairs. You guys, this motel didn't have an elevator. It was like one of these walk-ups. You know, I was, you know, like 70% of Americans, I think, aren't they saying like now we're overweight? Anybody is going to look like they're heaving and hoeing up the stairs if it's like five stories, six stories up just to go to your room and you're like, oh, I forgot to, I forgot to get some band-aids and you go back down to the convenience store. You're going to go back up. And if you have, you know, a drink or two with dinner, yeah, you're going to heave and hope. But then they're like, oh, he had some heart conditions and he had some health problems. And, oh, it must have been due to some sort of health problems. But the autopsy was inconclusive. He was reported missing for three days before his body was discovered. Police say he died of a heart attack, but there are rumors that he may have been actually poisoned. He blew the lid on, you know, again, that double bubble group. The double bubble group is suspected of essentially paying for E. J. Myung's legal fees because the lawyers officially only charge him like $300,000, which sounds like a lot of money, which is a lot of money. But people who know how much legal bills are and what this case was and how far it went said that the bill should have been $10 million. And what they were able to find was that, okay, Lee Jae Myung officially gave them, or maybe not so officially, because it was like kind of from the trunk of a car, like $300,000 and stocks. Now, this, this was not supposed to be found out. Stocks that were supposed to be sold later in the double bubble group that, you know, they, they told the lawyers be like, okay, you know, hold on to these stocks. Don't sell them until, you know, the everything settles and then like sell them after three years and they would be worth about two million dollars maybe there's eight million other dollars somewhere else that you know prosecutors weren't able to find in terms of compensation who knows they could probably got creative about it and he found evidence of at least that transaction and he was spreading it out there and that was the demise that he ended up with what was the lawsuit you might be wondering it was because of the lawsuit involving his supposedly trying to lock his brother up in a psychiatric ward. Yeah, that came to bite him back in the butt. And this was during the presidential election. So this was a very high stakes scenario where this could have derailed his presidential campaign. During this whole time, these were very high stakes periods of whether he could become president or not. And he needs to become president in order to then secure safety for all the alleged sins 
of his past, especially with the biggest one, the Taejangdong land development scandal. That leads us to death number two. Death number two and death number one happened in the same month, in December. So death number three happened in January 2022. Deaths number one and two happened in December 2021. So in the course of two months, there were three deaths. So let's go over the second death. This was Kim Moon-gi, the director of the Sungnam Development Corporation's project development team. He was found dead in his office from a possible suicide. He was the one that turned a blind eye to a clause in a project contract that allows the private corporation that was set up to essentially be like a little parasite within this whole uh, group of consortium of companies to siphon off the profits of this land development usually when this because this land was owned by the city and usually when you redevelop this you know this land if it's owned by the city it's good for the city because they get some of the profits and usually that's how it all works in Korea, like you put up some apartment complexes and shopping centers and the the thing is structured so that yes, private corporations build and uh, there's finance, you know, banks that come in and you know, everybody makes their money, but also the city or the state makes money too. But what they were able to do is is kind of cut the government out and redirect the profits that should have gone to the government and to the taxpayers and put it into this real podunk financing company. You can't even call it really a bank. You can't really even call it like you you would basically kind of call it like a like a maybe like if somebody said like, oh, I'm going to open up a, a, a stockbroker finance company and it was started by, I mean, no shade to our fellow journalists, but it was like a journalist, a former journalist that Lee Jae Myung met, started this like finance company. And so that was, that was the basically kind of like the, the secret parasite inside the organization that would collect all this money. And then, well, what the journalist is saying is that, well, it's just my money. And then everyone's like, yo, that is not your money. There is no power game in Korea that would allow a former journalist to just set up some random finance company and then let you keep all this money that normally would just go to the city. And ain't nobody going to let you keep all that money. And so essentially people are saying like, yep, that. And who approves that all? Who has the power at the end, at the top, it was Lee Jae Myung as the governor, the uh, mayor. And however, Lee Jae Myung's position throughout all of this essentially is just like, oh, I had no idea. I don't know what this, you know, this is just some project, you know, one of many projects that, you know, I was overseeing. And even with this guy, Kim Moon Gi, the guy that, that supposedly killed himself, he said that he didn't even know him. He was just like, oh, I meet so many people. You know, he was just like some lower level, like government employee. I don't know who this guy was. This guy, this guy and Lee Jae Myung went golfing together. They even went on an overseas trip together to either New Zealand or Australia. And this was like, you know, one of these overseas trips where it was like only a dozen people, like dozen officials going together. There's video of them kind of like, you know, chatting and kind of making jokes with one another and touring different sites together. So people are just like, look, yo, like you... Just keep talking, man. Just keep talking. But he's been able to get away with it so far, saying like, I don't know her. So this guy was found dead in his office at 8.20 p.m. at the very office of the Songnam Development Corporation. You know, the the place that gave, basically gave him the money and then ultimately ended, you know, led to his demise. Deal with the devil. And this is... 
this is uh, only after his family had contacted authorities saying that they could not reach him. And then uh, they, uh, the employees opened the door of the director's office and then found him. All right, then who was the first person to die that we know of? There could be more bodies buried that we don't know of. But this guy was Yu Han Gi, the head of the Pochon Urban Corporation. And he was found dead near his home on December 10th. And this was one day after prosecutors requested an arrest warrant for him. So he was about to go to jail. And mysteriously, he left his house at 2 a.m. And he was found at 7.40 a.m. in the morning in a flower bed near his apartment. His family had reported to police around 4 a.m. that, you know, like, where's daddy? Where where did he go? And he supposedly left behind a will. He's suspected of accepting bribes of about like $200,000 uh, from the investment company that I was talking about, like the, you know, shady ones. It's called Hwachan Taeyu. And also, Chunhua Dongin number four, like they have num numbers, I guess they're different funds. You know, if you have like investment, uh, investment com if you have like these types of private investment companies, you, you separate your, your capital into, you know, different funds. So, and they have different ownership structures. And so they wanted to, they being the prosecutors, wanted to arrest you and the way that this has been set up to look like is that he couldn't handle it and just decided to end up in the flower bed but i don't know how you how how do you end up how do you end up in a flower like were these poisonous flowers like you know what what was going on with the flowers and how come they 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 never really tell us definitively they just keep saying like oh they just wanted to end their lives and therefore we get in korea get this reputation like I say, is not deserved if you refer to my previous videos where too many deaths are just swept under the rug under the category of suicide, therefore making Korea look like everybody is just killing themselves when a lot of the times it may not be, especially when you look at our murder rate, it's so suspiciously low. We have like the lowest murder rate in the world and yet one of the highest suicide rates. And so a lot of the times what should be probably cl classified mm -hmm, in the other category is just c called oh they just couldn't handle life anymore and they just wanted to leave but we want to take a moment to let you know what Lee Jae-myung said in light of the most recent death the fifth death he said that this is all because of the prosecution and he said is this investigation my fault he said this is lunacy and he said that he can't ever forgive the prosecution's crazy knifing. Now there he goes again. Remember I said that he has this strange knife fetish or knife obsession because he refers to that metaphor or turn of phrase a lot and especially even in a recorded private conversation with his brother, the one that he wanted to lock up in the mental hospital, he said, like, you know, because he would call for fun, it sounded like, and verbally abuse his family members. And so the family members recorded it and then just released it to the public. And so in one of the conversations, he says that, oh, do you, you know what? I should just, you know, stab your mama in the hole that you came out of. Yeah, her mama's biscuit with a knife. But then the psycho thing is, is that, honey, that's the same hole that you came out of. That's your brother. So not only is it your mom and it's the same, you know, entry to the world, it's, and it's odd that he always is talking about knives but it's not odd if you do believe in all of the rumors and then also in the pictures that we've seen 
actual pictures of him holding hands with mafia leaders in Korea that, you know, in Korea, we don't really have guns. They s sort of exist, but you know, the main weapon of choice is it, it, our knives. So that's why, you know, people are sensitive about knives. If you see Korean TV movies in Korea, uh, in the action scenes and stuff, they will blur out knives uh, because as a you know public morality code. And so him talking too much about knives is creepy is is creepier in a korean setting than it would be in an american setting now the conservative politicians they're not mincing words they're literally implying that we have a serial killer on the loose song il jong you know one of the politicians that was like really giving us a show during the bts military exemption hearings he was on the side of mil of bts getting the military exemption but i don't know if he was just doing a show because it didn't really look like he you know made a difference but he was saying that there is an upsurge in horrific deaths around lee jae myung this is not a horror film this is reality why is Lee Jae-myung still in politics? And even with all these people dying around him, Lee Jae-myung has never once taken moral or ethical responsibility. He said that we need to block the sixth or seventh tragic death from happening. Then Kim Jae-won, who is a former aide to President Park Geun-hye and is an his assemblyman, he... And he once bragged about some other politician. He was campaigning for another politician and he was just kind of giving this stump speech and he just let out this anecdote of how this other politician helped him get him out of a DUI because of his political position. Anyhow, but he said that in order to protect our citizens, we've got to hurry up and lock up Lee Jae-myung or this tragedy will not end. Lee Jae-myung has to confess to his crimes and he wants to see Lee Jae-myung walk himself right into jail. So it remains a question whether prosecutors are going to succeed, but Lee Jae-myung continues with this line saying that the prosecutors are the ones being unreasonable and being the abusers of power to try to nab him in a political witch hunt. So what do you think? Do you think it's a political witch hunt? Or do you think that the writing is on the wall? Like, I mean, how, how much, how, to what extent? I guess that's also a big debate. Like, if you can't catch somebody red-handed, to what extent do you trust the evidence that you can collect and then create some actions to protect yourself from some tragedies that might happen. One person disappearing every three months over the past 15 months connected to this man's political scandals, I think is just way too much. But that's my opinion and the opinion of a lot of people who are scared. All right, guys. Well, what do you think? Put your comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.